a dime for every time someone issued some sort of complaint about the millennial generation, I would be rich right now. We're going to dig into the differences between the generations right now with Karen Tornight joining me on set. You are Ernst & Young's America's Inclusiveness Officer, yes. as well as a partner. Yes. Great title. We discussed what that was in the break. And on Skype, joining us from Boston, we have Dan Schwabel. Did I say that right, Dan? Shawbell. Shawbell. Okay, you're the founder of Millennial Branding as well as an author, but essentially your company is a, a research firm for Generation Y. Before we start, just to clear it up, let's bring up a full screen so everyone knows what Generation Y, X, and the baby boomer generations are. If you are a millennial, part of Generation Y, you are between the ages of 18 and 32. Generation X, 33 to 48. And if you are a baby boomer, 49 to 67. So that's what we're talking about. You know if this is you based on that full screen. Karen, we'll start with you because you're sitting next to me. Ernst & Young commissioned um, a study. Yep. And you wanted to look at the differences in the workplace and how we're starting to see a lot of baby boomers have to answer to millennials yeah. and Generation X. Yeah. How does that go about? Well, it's incredibly important to us, and I'm really, to, to you, you get some feedback that's on the negative side on Gen Y, well, I have to tell you that I'm really bullish on Gen Y. Okay, that's it's, nice to hear. Absolutely. Because you're like the first person I should say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you'll hear, hear others, and, and I'll tell you why. At EY, because of our apprenticeship model, mm -hmm. and because we also hire a tremendous amount of new hires off of campus, mm -hmm. we tend to track ahead of generational differences in the workplace. Okay. And I'll give you an example. National averages in the U.S. US are about one third of the US are Gen Y mm -hmm. in the workplace. At EY, two thirds of our workplace are Got Gen it. Y. So it's incredibly important. And in fact, we're actually going to hire another 6,000 Gen Yers off of campus this fall. Okay. So Gen Y are out there and they are a huge part of the workplace. Absolutely. Dan, you know a thing or two about this generation. What's so great about them and what's not so great about them? Well, first of all, I am part of Gen Y, also term millennials. They're the largest, most diverse, most educated generation of all time, 80 million strong, they're going to be 75% of the global workforce by 2025, and they're really, they're taking, already taking leadership positions, so it's, it's very exciting, and they're making a positive impact, I, I get all to, the negative publicity. to leadership, but I just want to hear your thoughts on when people say this is the entitled, me, me, me generation, what do you say to that? I say that people need to start, stop reading you know, Time Magazine's cover story and all this yeah. negative publicity and start giving them a chance okay. and letting them prove themselves and beat the stereotypes uh, because everyone's different and, yeah. you know, the, they have a lot of value to add. They grew up with t technology. They can teach older workers they're how to tech use all this savvy. technology to help them they're pers uh, professionally and for the company. Right, right. I understand. And they're changing the workplace, Karen, because they're demanding different things from their employers, right? Like right. maybe more flex hours. They Things are, like they that. are, but our study actually revealed some really interesting things. Yeah, First off, for perks, cash was king for everyone. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and flexibility was important to everyone, including Gen X and boomers, but Gen okay. X the most. Okay. And promotions were the most important to Gen Y, in particular for Gen Y women. And we are seeing that they're getting those promotions. And, and, That's good to hear. And an unbelievable number, and this is what our study showed, are surging into manager roles. So in fact, almost 90% of the Gen Yers that we study in our external survey have achieved manager within the last five years and that's an unprecedented pace that we haven't seen with their predecessors and then this is certainly changing the demographics of the nation right I mean we've seen during the recession a lot of men in construction and manufacturing those male dominated fields lost their jobs we've seen a she recovery women have regained she all the jobs they lost during the recession they're 40 percent of breadwinners in US households so now to hear that I mean, they're taking management roles, they're getting ahead. This is really changing things. Exactly. How do men, how do baby boomers react to the fact that not only is their boss younger than them, but the boss is a she? Well, we found that actually, we actually found that there were a lot of yeah. strengths. And we found that, that, um, the, that most of the generations, all of the generations actually, most of the respondents mm -hmm. voted that Gen X was most likely and best equipped to lead. And that included of young women and mm -hmm. young men. And that because that they were so supportive of flexibility and, and others. So we're finding that it's happening. And when yeah. people are talking about Gen Y, the future of management, Gen Y is already there. They've, they've reached it. They yeah. are at that level. But there are some skill gaps that we did see and uncover in the research that individuals and companies likely need to address. 
Okay, what are some of those? Want to know what some yes, of those are? Please. Okay, <laughs> so communications can be one, uh -huh. and, and um, another one could be lofty skills, such as decision making and, and leading during um, tough times mm -hmm. can be difficult. And I think some of that, um, to be honest with you, is not really their fault. Meaning that they haven't necessarily had all the work experience required mm -hmm. because they're getting promoted at a faster pace. Mm -hmm. So some of it is time and experience, and others is just that, to be honest with you, I think that they are somewhat of a victim of the overscheduling mm -hmm. of the generations that came before them. Yep. So there isn't as much time to shadow and, and, and formally learn on the job that mm -hmm. they might have seen with their predecessors. Understood. Dan, do you want to respond? Yeah, absolutely. What she just named, they're all soft skills. And when people start their jobs, they don't, they don't recognize that how they act, how they're perceived, can really make a difference in their career and to get into those leadership positions. I mean, in my research, we found that having a positive attitude, teamwork skills, and the ability to manage tasks and delegate tasks are just becoming more and more important. People aren't thinking about these, but these are the building blocks to what it takes to become a manager and to get up uh, to improve your status in your organization. Uh, Dan, can you talk to me a little bit about, about your book, Promote Yourself, The New Rules for Career Success? Success, Because you are a New York Times, you are a New York Times best-selling author. That's a big deal, especially Thank since you. you are yourself so young, like you told us. <laughs> Promote Yourself is all about pushing yourself ahead. It's about uh -huh. thinking inside the box, making the best of your position, not just moving around from company to company, but saying, you know, I have all these resources. How can I make the best of it? And when people move from company to company, it really allows those people who are in companies to differentiate themselves and really move up even faster. So it's about empowerment, it's about personal accountability, not waiting for opportunities to come to you, chasing those opportunities. We have viewers chat in, and we have two chats now. Either one of you can answer. Uh, Appalled says, this new generation will not teach elders tech. If anything, we have learned that Generation Y is selfish and ageist. Who wants to pick that let one me, up? Let me try with Karen. that one first. First off, our study showed that actually, yes, Gen Y was perceived as being entitled. However, all three generations actually wrote in that they felt that they were somewhat entitled themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think if we all think about, I'm, I'm a Gen Xer, I think we all have been rather fortunate in some way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. But we found that actually cross-generational teams are incredibly impactful in, in teaching each other communications and technology. Okay. And then uh, fly in... Fly, I don't know, this name is weird. But Dan, you can respond to this one. I learned how to run an oscilloscope in high school. Uh, now just how, how much smarter are you than us older folks? Well, you know what? I read these things on the fly. If I don't understand that, Dan, I don't expect you to answer it. Sorry about that. We will move on from that one. I'm a Generation X, too. Okay. And, and this is my question. I like when there's gray hair. I call it gray hair mm -hmm. in the workplace because I feel like that is someone who's been around. They likely have experience in the field that I'm in yeah. and they could be my mentor. And I could copy their good work and learn from their mistakes. Um, is that what we're seeing in the workplace? There's not so much gray hair anymore, particularly not in a newsroom. Yeah. The workplace is really young and it's for a bunch of reasons. Well, yeah, I and I, will, I mean, from what I'm seeing in the next five years, boomers are really going to retire and then it's all going to be about transferring that knowledge to Gen X and, and millennials. Do they want to, Karen? I'm seeing that they do. Okay. And I think the most, and I, that's why I think that Gen Y is incredibly productive in our workplace. And they, they respect and understand that there's a lot to learn and to seek out. And the best Gen Y professionals, and likely those that are advancing, are really proactively seeking out to learn wherever mm -hmm. they might have gaps and to appreciate that. To your point on Gen X and what they have to offer and why they were considered best equipped is because they have the experiences you're talking about, including having worked through two significant downturns in the economy, as well as also being tech savvy, which makes them vital to the workplace. Right. And it's got to be frustrating for baby boomers, particularly the older baby boomers, is that unemployment is a huge issue. It's not just the national unemployment rate, that's 7.3%. It's long-term unemployment which is largely affecting the baby boomers more than any other generation. They might have been laid off because maybe they had a nice, padded, well-deserved salary. Um, they were laid off during a recession. Who wants to hire someone in their yeah, 50s? And, and yeah. in my research, we found that out of all the generations, boomers are the most discriminated against because of their age. Yeah. That's an unfortunate reality. But all right, you want I to would just add that baby boomers really were were very highly regarded with respect to a one key item, mm -hmm. in addition to many other productive items, as, uh, as to executive presence, and that Gen X and Gen Y could learn a substantial amount, which means confidence, communications, right. and how to project and how to run meetings, how to sell business, 
how to generate work, very important. So the message to bosses and the messages to companies after this discussion is understand that the workplace is changing and the dynamics in it are changing. Mm -hmm. And you got people working longer, and you have people who are younger finding su success a little bit quickly, and you need to understand how to adapt. I would also just add that uh, you know Gen Yers are entrepreneurial in nature, as we know, and our research played that out. So to the extent that companies can offer employees not only flexibility, but flexibility in work opportunities might help to also feed that entrepreneurial spirit. Yeah, Karen and Dan, I want to thank both of you so much for your perspective on this topic. It is a hot button issue. We're going to put Dan's book up on the screen, Promote Yourself, The New Rules for Career Success. Karen, uh, we will show uh, the Ernst & Young website. And we thank you for the study that you did commission.